as a faculty at a management institute, I get 90 minutes to cover a small topic in my class, and much to the displeasure of my students, some of them are sitting here, I tend to squeeze out every single minute of that time. And today, I have 18 minutes to cover the last 10 years of my life. So, <laughs> without any further delay, I'll come straight to the point. It was in the year 2012. I was having a casual talk with a friend over a cup of tea, and she mentions we do Iron Man. I had absolutely no idea what she was talking about, but she got me curious and asked me to check TEDx talks by Anu Vedinathan, the first Indian to do an Iron Man. I remember wondering what on earth this TEDx talks was. <laughs> and as I googled them out that day, two dreams took birth, which seemed impossible then. First, I'll do an Iron Man. I think she's just introduced told you what is Ironman. So Ironman is actually an endurance triathlon event, which includes swimming, cycling, and running. And the second dream was wish someday I'm invited as a speaker on TEDx. Fast forward 2016, July 2016, I completed my first half Ironman event in Budapest. That included 1.9 kilometers of swimming in open waters, 90 kilometers of cycling, and 21 kilometers of running. Now, just in case you're wondering, there are no breaks in between. You do it back to back within a given cutoff period. Just a month later, in August 2016, I receive a call from SIS GST asking me if I was interested to be a speaker on TEDx. And here I am. So talk about dreams coming true. Thank you. So this is not the first time that, you know, I have dreamt of something which seems impossible and it has come true. This journey began way back when I was a little girl. I remember while in school, I had this strong desire to fly and travel. So I expressed this desire to my father and asked him to get my passport made. Now, coming from a very humble family, my father literally laughed at me, asking me, what are you going to do with a passport when we can't even afford a taxi? And I told him, one day, I'm going to fly all over the world. I eventually got my passport made then, which I have never used, huh? this one. Today, I'm on my third passport. My second passport is full of visas of different countries, or stamped on it. Sports has been my passion since childhood. This is me receiving an award during school days as a best student of the year, because I not only excelled in studies, but I was very well in sports that year. Now, I wanted to pursue sports professionally, but I could not do so. It was just like any average Indian family, even in my family, education took precedence over sports. For any sports person, being a part of Olympics and representing your country at an international level is like a dream come true. Many years later, 2008, I had the honor of carrying Olympic torch during Beijing Olympics. No, it was nothing related to sports. There was an online contest. I participated, I got lucky, and a part of my dream did come true that day. <laughs> 2016, I represented India at Half Ironman Budapest, and yet another dream did come true that day. So, dreaming is just one part of the story. Making it happen is another story altogether, and today, I would like to share with you my story of my journey to Iron Man. Now, this phase began in 2005 when I moved to China for work. It was a new place, new atmosphere, loneliness, and a lot of work pressure. And this 
led to a medical condition called as hypothyroidism, which resulted in me gaining excess weight, loss of stamina, and of course, depression soon followed. Now, on the surface, this looks like that the tides were against me. But this turned out to be a blessing in disguise because the only way to improve this condition was to exercise regularly. And this paved my way to my dream journey. In 2008, I was introduced to cycling by a local friend. Everyone in China cycles. So I started cycling to office on weekdays. And over weekends, I would go for long rides. And it was quite fun because I was exploring all the nearby places on my cycle. And I made a lot of new friends over there. Year 2011, this year turned out to be a turning point of my life. I relocated back to India. And within two months, I lost my father. My sister was diagnosed with a serious medical condition. And if that was not enough, I experienced something called as reverse culture shock at work. And this led me to rethink priorities of my life. So by November 2011, I decided to quit my corporate job. But it was a very well thought through decision. I had paid off all my loans with some savings aside and took up a part-time assignment. And of course, I had my cycling as a hobby to keep me occupied during the rest of the days. 2012, I already mentioned to you about the dream of Ironman. I decided to do Ironman in 2016. Why? To give myself four years to prepare for the event because at that time, I was only cycling. I had not done any kind of endurance running, nor I knew how to swim. So over the next two years, I focused on cycling and running and completed a couple of endurance cycling events and a couple of half marathons. However, I kept avoiding swimming because I still have water phobia. But finally, in June 2014, for the first time, I joined swimming classes. I worked very hard towards it. And within one year, I was able to swim 1.9 kilometers of distance nonstop. Now that is like swimming 78 loops of a 25 meter swimming pool. So yeah, a year later, in October 2015, I participated in a local triathlon event in Hyderabad. And I completed that distance in nine hours. The international cutoff time for ha uh, half Ironman event is eight hours. And at that time, I had already registered for Budapest Half Ironman, which was scheduled on 30th July 2016. So that left me with precisely eight months to prepare for the event, okay, and train hard. And I had a rigorous training plan in place to achieve my goal. Sounds pretty easy, right? Even I thought so. But then there were a bag full of surprises awaiting me. And did I have to wait long for that? Let me take you through what happened in the next eight months. December 2015, while working out in the gym, I injured my lower back. Doctors advised no exercise for the next one month. Fantastic. This is how I start my rigorous training plan. January 2016, I, the condition improved. I started getting back to my training. Within a few days, a surprise popped up in the form of a foot injury, which I'm still having, and severe heel pain. And I was advised no running for the next two to three months. Great. February 2016, I said, with, after that momentary setback, I focused on cycling and swimming. March 2016, just when I thought the storm was over, there was a tornado waiting for me with open arms. All the swimming pools in Navi Mumbai were shut down due to water shortage problems for the entire summer. And here I am, no swimming, no running, just three months away from my first Ironman event. April 2016, 
So I said, okay, fine. Swimming pools are closed, the seas are wide open. I decided to take the plunge in the sea and do open water swim sessions. But I could manage only four to five sessions in the next two months because of cost constraints and definitely weather conditions. May 2016, <laughs> no respite from the foot injury. So running was a big no. Monsoons were fast approaching, so we had to stop open water swim session. What about my cycling? It said, why should I be left behind? <laughs> Let her trouble more. And <laughs> I had a nasty fall during cycling, which resulted in a chest injury. And again, here I am with an Ironman training plan of no swimming, no cycling, no running, just two months away from my first Ironman event, leaving me with severe depression and frustration. On a brighter side, I was in June 2016, I was able to merge an official trip to Europe with my event. And that gave me a very uh, opportunity to spend the last crucial 45 days in Europe. I got back to my training, did some cycling, swimming, and a little bit of running, whatever was possible. The cold and windy weather over there was definitely a challenge. But it was again a help because it got me used to that local weather in Europe prior to the event. Now, let me come to the final countdown. That is the three days, the last three days to the event. 28 July 2016. I visited the venue to complete the registration formalities. Now, owing to my training plan, which had gone for a complete toss, it was pretty unnerving to see all these charged up athletes from across the world. 29 July 2016, the organizers had arranged for a trial swim in the Danube River. This is exactly the place where I swam on the day of the event. I went for the trial swim, and I was just 200 meters into the water. I panicked. The fear set in. And I started struggling. Within seconds, I feel two strong arms grab me out of the water and put me in the boat. And I saw it was the rescue team. So they were concerned. They asked me what happened. And I said, nothing, nothing. I just panicked. Please put me down in the water. I'll swim back. One of them told me, I'm not putting you down in the, back in the water. You don't know how to swim. Go back to your country first, learn how to swim, and then come and participate in the event. And that was the final nail in the coffin. Back in the hotel, I was at a complete breakdown stage. I was so consumed by fear, I could not sleep. And I decided I quit, and I'll not participate in the event. I decided to give up on the dream for which I had worked so hard for the last four years. 30th July 2016, the event day, I got up, went to the venue. I was standing in front of the river, and I thought, if I do not swim today, I'll never be able to get over my fear, and I will never be able to do an Ironman again in my life. It is now or never. And this was the moment of my resurrection. And as they say, rest is history. Not only I, did I complete the swim in the given cutoff time, but I completed the entire event in 7 hours, 46 minutes, 50 seconds, well within the cutoff time of 8 hours. Nothing earth chattering, right? Nothing great, right? Am I the first person to do an Ironman? No. And yet, here I am delivering a TED Talks. So what, what am I doing here? Believe in your dreams. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today, when I look at this, those moments from this vantage point, 
I see those events as pieces of a puzzle. That is awe-inspiring and very meaningful, not just to me, but to each one of us here. Because this is not about Iron Man. This is life. And all I did was I dared to dream the impossible. And the universe co-created it with me. If there are few nuggets which I wish to share with you today, then they would be this. Choose your dreams and choose well. Because a burning desire once ignited never goes out. Big or small doesn't make difference. Your dreams can be as big as climbing an Everest or it can be as simple as meeting your favorite celebrity or even a Cinderella dream come true. Believe in your dreams. Listen to your heart, what it yearns for. And remind yourself that your dreams are yours and yours alone. Never allow someone else's ideas of what is possible for you and what is not possible for you to change your beliefs. Make friends with uncertainty. Be prepared for any kind of challenges, even at the 11th hour. And finally, do all our dreams come true? No. Sometimes we work very hard towards a dream, but we see no results. And we wonder whether we should keep pursuing our dreams or we should give up. And both these situations are equally painful. What do you do then? I would say, let go. Commit yourself and give the best you have got. But do not get obsessed by your dreams. Let go of how and when things will happen. Just leave them, live in the moment and enjoy the journey. I would like to conclude this talk with lines from my favorite book, The Alchemist. To realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. And this is Maktub. Thank you. <laughs>